All right, welcome back, Tide fans, to Tide Talk. I'm your host, Sean Taylor. I'm here with Maurice Booth, Jimmy Messick. I want to jump right into the Arkansas game. Everybody, you know, all the hype about Tua being out and could the offense produce and, and uh, how is Mac Jones going to do? They were going to you know, dummy down the offense a little bit. Well, I think we saw that that wasn't going to happen. I actually, if, if I'm not mistaken, scored more points in half than any time under Saban, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? 41? Yep, that's correct, and this is a new shirt. Thank you for it. Looks good, Maurice. Thank you. Good job. Uh, they, they, I watched the, the uh, post game. Uh, the reporter asked, did you want to go light early on to get in comfortable? He said, well, yeah, but we do that with two as well. So the quick pass is the little... Pop uh, pass. Yeah, they call pop Jet pass. sweep, but it's really a pass. It's a pass. It, it is a forward <clears> pass. So, yeah, he seemed to really get comfortable with it as you and I were talking. Uh, he had a uh, Mac had a little bit of what you call buck fever early on as far as timing goes, but he settled down and I thought he looked really well. Jimmy, what's your what's your thought? Yep. Good. <laughs> Good okay, er, okay every, Jimmy. Everything everything he said. <laughs> I mean, look, we yeah. talked about it before. You know, we talked about it several times. I, I was really, I, I felt comfortable. I, I know Mac Jones is a good player. I mean, he was a four-star recruit. If you heard what Lane Kiffin said, Lane Kiffin said he recruited him, and he was a really, really good football player and that, that the offense would not skip a beat. Mm -hmm. To score 41 at halftime, it's what we said. The, you know, the, the little jet sweep, which is considered a pass, right. when you can get it to the guys that's out there, you know. Um, well, let me ask you this. Did you see anything – outside of the timing that he looked uncomfortable with or made a mistake? I didn't. I thought that he managed the offense well, managed the clock well. Yep. I thought he did a really good job with, you know, the times where you felt like he was checking into something. Um, at least that's what it looked like to me. I thought that, listen, the RPO, I mean, we only ran a couple where he yep. actually pulled it. And, and I thought he threw a couple dimes. Yep. Um, so... You know, I, was, we, I was worried when he ran the RPO. I was like, dude, don't get it. Right. <laughs> but, he, but he goes and slides. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, for me, um, I think you could tell he was confident, a lot more confident than he walked into the game in Tennessee for sure. Yeah. Again, that's that week of preparation. Sure. But you could also tell how confident the teammate, the, I mean, the huddle was too. Yeah. You know, they just, I mean, so I think all that um, had a lot to play into what, how, how we, you know, how, First half. Well, if you listen to the players leading up to Saturday, they all were, were saying, look, Mac Jones is a, is a player. I mean, don't expect us to limit anything. He's going to come out and the, the playbook's going to be open. And I kind of felt that way too. Not to mention, I don't know if you guys heard, but prior to the game, they were just talking about, you know, just statistics and things like that. And they were saying that he may even know the offense as much or more than Tua. I did hear that to the fact that uh, Saban was talking about he's a real student of the game. Now, of course, you're going to sit there and go, well, the coach is going to hype up the player. But there's a theory that second team players are more knowledgeable because they're sitting there not only watch, uh, learning in, in the meetings, but also in practice. That's right. Because I'm sitting by, I'm not getting the reps, but I'm having to stand there, so I'm picking up on everything. And that's, you know, just like in the NFL, you know, a second string quarterback, great gig. You sit there and you know everything and you become an NFL head coach. Right. I think he showed uh, a great understanding of the offense. I thought he looked very comfortable. I look at a player's demeanor during uh, pregame and then when they come out there as far as they're smiling or they tense or whatever, he seemed very, very loose. loose. Yeah. I agree with that. Extremely. You know, there's one thing to, like you say, watch from the sideline, see it in the, you know, from practice in meetings, and kind of know and, and maybe even see things that that maybe Tua doesn't see in game type situation, right? right? right. But it's another thing to go out there when when the lights are on, and, yeah, and actually execute, execute that. it. That's right. Good point. And like I say, I think you did. Wonderful. And there's, there's, you know, this is another thing with the relationship of Tua and Mac is the fact that anytime a player comes off, whether Tua comes off or Mac's coming off. Yeah, you listen to your coaches, but when your teammate tells you something, hey, they're cheating over on, on That's this, right. this play. Right. So it makes a, a little bit more – it's a great relationship, and I think it, it's shown through that even when Jalen was and, and I don't know – and I don't mean to cut you off, Sean, but – and I don't know if it was 
purposely done, but what about the adjustment on the long ball, though, the, the deep ball? The yeah. first one he threw was more of a line. Like I said, maybe that was the, that <clears throat> old deer in headlights yeah. or, or buck, buck fever, fever. Buck fever. Excited him, oh, gosh, there he is, and overthrows him by a few yards, kind of more, more of a line drive type pass. That last one was just on a dime, but he was a little more air under it. He just, I mean, it was like a perfect adjustment to that long We ball, were talking about that, beautiful. Jimmy, right before the show, as we were waiting on you, by the way. <laughs> we, were, we were talking about that. And, and that's, I mean, listen, we, we've all played before. You, you know, you see that guy and he's open and you're thinking, oh, my gosh. You know, and that was really his first deep ball. And he, he overshot the guy. He, he got buck fever. Got a little excited. Adrenaline was flowing. But it was very clear that he made the necessary adjustments throughout the game. Mm -hmm. He made some really good passes throughout that game, even before that last long ball. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, you know, Nick Saban talked about it several times. It's not just the Mac Jones that's got to come out here and perform and be the leader. The other guys have to play well to support him. And I thought they did that. I mean, I thought, you know, the running backs – did a really good job with the football. I thought the running backs did a really good job pass blocking. Yeah, they did. Um, I saw a couple of uh, couple of times where Harris and Robinson stepped up. Um, it was it was good enough block. It wasn't uh, great. Picked block. up the blitz. Yeah, they picked it up. It was nice. Uh, I liked that. And speaking of those two, I thought they ran uh, their best games so far. I thought the offensive line did a really uh, good or, job. Yeah, we get it. It's Arkansas. Yeah. I know. But it's still an improvement. It's a and we've been saying that about the running back. It seemed like every week for two or three weeks now. Better man, and better. That was their best game. Oh, man, that was their best game. Oh, man, that was their best game. And so, obviously, they're getting better. There's no doubt Which, Najee Harris could have went for over 100 yards, but there was no need to keep him in the game. My, Got my, my problem with Najee is he makes more moves before he hits the line of scrimmage <laughs> than I do all day. Yeah. And uh, I'm sitting there, dude, come on. I mean, that's a lot of juking. Now, there's – a couple times where he'll do it, and I'm like, geez, well, Pete, how'd you do that? Right. And other times it's like, stop dancing, hit it. Well, that's it. always been his critique is all that dancing around, as big as he is. But he has gotten better. But you're right. There's still, to me, too much kind of tiptoeing or dancing or whatever you want to call yeah. it, trying to get to that hole. Yeah, I, I, I want to say that, you know, overall, from an offensive perspective, you know, yes, they're playing Arkansas. And there was no question that, that we were going to win that football game. I thought everybody in the country knew that. They're still Division I football players over there. They still have some talent over there. And, and, and for us to go out and do it the way we did it, it would have been different if we would have went out there and struggled a little bit and sputtered. And, you know, but we went out there and we took care of business. The offensive line, I thought, did a really good job, both run blocking and pass blocking. Now, look, one of the things that you don't think about is just – you know, Mac Jones right-handed, two is left-handed, blind side's now on a different side, the timing of snaps and things like that. You know, I thought they did a really good job. We didn't have a lot. We had some penalties, and we'll talk about penalties a little bit later in the show, but we didn't have a lot of offensive mm -hmm. shoot-yourself-in-the-foot type penalties. This may be the first game where I don't think um, uh, Will had the offensive tackle had a penalty. Right. And yeah, no false starts. Yeah, okay. which is unusual. So, so again, with, with a new quarterback, with a new cadence, a new rhythm, yep. count, that sort of thing. I thought that was, you know, I, I think that's pretty impressive. And did anybody notice Dickerson leave the game in the second half? I didn't until they mentioned it. Exactly. In the first game. I, I mean, yeah, I, didn't it again. I saw Owen snapping, so I. I mean, I didn't really pay attention to it. We I guess. were talking for the hour and a half before you got here. Um, <laughs> an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, but the the thing was. Uh, he, Saban said, yeah, they had little injuries. They could have played, but I decided to take them out. And which was we nice. Which is a clear message of I'm not taking any chances right. in this game. Mm -hmm. I know i got the big one coming up, and we're going to have everybody healthy. So that's why I took So them. great lead in, Maurice, talking about the big one coming up. So let's take a short break. Um, on behalf of Bob English and State Farm, we'll be right. Good job. You right here, yeah. We'll be right back with Tide Talk. Enjoy the good times a little more with the right plan. As your State Farm agent, I am here to help you protect your dreams and loved ones with life insurance. With over 60 years combined State Farm experience, call me or any of my team to find out which options are best for you. Another way we're here to help life go right.
All right, welcome back, Tide fans. Um, we, we were talking right there that last bit, and I don't want to jump into the big game yet. We still want to talk about a few things. And, and that is, you guys were mentioning it prior to, the, the, the way that our defense has progressed, the way we've moved up in the polls as it relates to stats and where we're ranked now. 19th. You know, ranked 19th in the country. Coming off of earlier in the year, we were 37th. And, yeah. you know, so we have seen some younger guys, Christian Harris for one. I text you in the game and said, man, he's all over the field. You texted me too. Uh, oh, yeah, I think we're in a group text. Yeah, yes, He's all over the field. He's starting to play with a little more confidence. Now, <clears throat> I think that he still – there's room, obviously, to grow because you can still see a little confusion on some things. You can see that with some of the younger guys. But he's starting to play a little more free. He's starting to play uh, with more of just athleticism and just react and play football. And, and man, look at – Look at uh, the first the first half. He's all over the place. I know he was in on eight nine tackles, and that's good to see that the younger yeah. guys are starting well, to relax. Well, obviously, and play week a bit. eight or technically nine, really, with the bye, you know, you, you would expect the the, the freshmen. Do you call them freshmen anymore? I mean, they I mean, are they I mean, are technically, technically I but they are. be a freshman all American. So yes. yeah. <laughs> um, but to me, the biggest difference on that defense is Lewis and Jennings. I mean, them jokers are getting after that quarterback. And even when they're not getting after quarterback, they're still making plays. Jenny's knocking balls down. The line. I mean, that, that's, that, that's the seniors there stepping up, you know. And so, to me, that's why the defense looks Who night and day different with them two, being healthy it, it, and playing it, well. It, you, Copeland and Curry. Copeland and Curry. God, we're a great team. I have ESPN. Have <laughs> you have ESPN? Yeah. So, I, we're going about that far, huh? Yeah, Copeland and Curry, the guys <laughs> off the edge that wreaked havoc – and when, when – we've all said it, when Harris is healthy, you know, Jennings on the other side, man, you know, I don't know that Harris can be blocked. If, if he's healthy and he's, you know, ready to go, I, I, I'm not sure Harris, that he can be blocked. What, I'm sorry, Lewis. About? Lewis. You're confused. Me. Lewis, I'll, I'm sorry. I, can see, I, can see I don't know that Terrell too, Lewis like, can be blocked. We talked about the play where they had the ball in the end zone and he comes off the edge – and he's shoving the 300-pound tackle back with one he's arm. He's bull rushing with one arm. And yeah. deflect or in the, in the quarterback's face. face he, just has to, he just has to throw it away, basically, or get rid of it quick. Right. I mean, he, he, he adds a new dynamic to the defense. And, and it's like and those it, two are more I – mean, you could tell they're more confident, I guess you, you could say. It takes some come, pressure come, off the come, young come linebackers. Off the injuries, they're, they're playing well, more confidently. The, and I can't remember which article I read, but it's a, a valid point to the fact that the DBs need to be thinking – Jennings and Lewis, yeah. because he's ha these quarterbacks are having to hurry. Yeah. And there's a lot to it to, as far as your decision making. Not to mention, when you see somebody coming at you like that, yeah, I, I kind of want to get rid of this ball. So he's, we saw it the other night now. Granted, I know that uh, Jerry Jones' grandson is right now is not Peyton Manning or the next Peyton Manning. And we'll see something different with Joe Burroughs, who's supposedly the Heisman front runner. Stop it. Anyway, uh, you're not drinking that Kool Aid. Not no, yet. I'm not, and I'm tired of everybody acting like he is, and he's not. And he's not even the best quarterback in the conference. Right. So stop it already. It's hype. Uh, I would, you know, I'd have Jalen and Tua above, way above him, but those guys are such different difference makers when they're on, when they're healthy, and coming from the edge. Every offensive coordinator has got to go, well, where are they? Where, mm -hmm. and and account where, where's my support? And account for That's them. right. They know where they are. They just got to get there and figure out how they're going to block them. Right. I mean, even the, the pick six. I mean, Diggs was in position, but the ball was so underthrown because he had – was it Lewis that had it yes. in his face yeah. again? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, I'm telling you, they're difference makers on the defensive side. Well, they were talking, you know, during the game about – the guys that are, you know, the freshmen that are playing, you know, we're playing six true freshmen. And, you know, you're starting to see their eight-game experience. I know D.J. Dale looked really good. Right. He looked really good Saturday night. And he is a grown man, by the way. I mean, he, he, he's a big old boy. And, and you're starting to see Raekwon Davis play a little bit better and, and starting to get into his role on that team. 
things are starting to come together, and, and what a great time to do that. You know, your 8 no, you got your bye week, and of course, you know, the game coming up is projected to be another game of the century, but the defense is starting to look a lot better. I think there's still room for improvement. I was oh, I, no doubt. I was they, pitching they a fit the other Saturday night when they have a 13-play drive and go 85 yards and score a touchdown. Now, I know we had some younger guys in and we had mixed some stuff up, but we still had some ones and, out and there. An offside penalty. <laughs> we, we still had some ones out there. Yeah, I don't think Coach Saban liked that very much. And no. guess who that – Guess who was? It was Mr. Also Davis. Ben, ben Davis. Poor, poor I, thought, I, I did feel bad for him because he was getting it. I, I, I did too. I mean, and the guy has just not been able to find a way to get on the field. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. this defense is definitely not what we're accustomed to seeing on the field, but they are drastically better than what they were a couple months ago. Without in, a doubt. In my, in my eyes. Without a doubt. I um, One thing I didn't notice, and y'all did – did I not see Jared, Jared Maiden? He did not play. Uh, they held yeah. him out. Yeah. Injury or it wasn't anything else? He didn't say. It wasn't I, serious. I think it was something, some kind of, it was something in his groin is what, yeah, it, was. what it was. Okay. It was something growing. One of those could have played, but no reason to play. Well, let me do word that differently. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I wouldn't say full growing. I would say something in there. So that's, that's your... This is so right moving right along. <laughs> Sorry. But I didn't think I, I noticed him, and I, I just know that he's played really well as of late, and I, I didn't see him out there. But you know, did we ever figure out who 91 was? <laughs> I gave you his name. I don't know. Mus I didn't Musica? Have any, yeah. I, I, I didn't have any. I, he, he, remind, I, he reminded me of. Uh, Kid from Australia. Australia, yeah, yeah. Jer Jeremy, what? what no, um, Williams yeah. was his Williams. was his name. Jesse Williams. Jesse, Jesse Williams. But, where, but I don't even remember. I, I haven't on, seen on him. Yeah, I haven't I mean, seen him. I mean, they've just been hiding him. I'm hiding but him. I, he, I, he actually, I can't hide that guy. He actually got a lot of playing time. Though they no doubt he did. Play, played a pretty good bit in the second half. I mean, so maybe we're him. starting to see some things that we haven't seen to this point that, you know, that we may see more of. And and um, you know, look, anybody that can give some guys some. A, a, a few plays of a breather, that sort of thing, that's always a bonus. Always a bonus. Real quick, let's talk about penalties. Guys, at some point in time, that's going to catch up with us. What, what are your thoughts with respect to what – is that just newness, young guys? You know, is that freshmen? Is it nerves? I know it's not coaching. We, we, we know it's not coaching. What, what, what's your well, thoughts on that? We've had more penalties than we've had under a Nick Saban team since he's been here. Right. Well, I think what you can get aggravated at are the, the pre-snap. That's when it's that's when you got that mental lapse. You know, the offsides, lining up offsides, yeah. the false starts. <clears throat> you know, not being in the right formation. Those kind of things is what drive you crazy. I mean, to me, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're you know pass interference, but you're playing, and it, I mean, there's a lot of that stuff could be called. Some of it's not called. I mean, I, to me, I can almost overlook some of those. Those aggressive you know, penalties. You know, the hands to the face, which I'm not sure there was a hands to the face when yeah, it was that's called. A tough I mean, call. it was right here. I get. I mean, those kind of penalties. Yeah, you don't want to see them, but like you no, said, I, mean, I, the I can't. The pre-snap were the ones that drive him crazy. Yeah. And you know, he did mention. I think it was on last Thursday's press conference about the DBs and getting their hands out there. Yeah. And he, he too, was like, I don't know why they're, they're putting their, their hands out there on them when they're beside them. There's no need for that. I mean, you can, I can feel you shoulder to shoulder. Or my, you know, so there's no need for me to reach out. And when his hands go up, I go up. So Did we have I'm, any pass interference? I don't remember I, any pass interference. I don't think we did this weekend. That's that's an improvement. So obviously they must right. have addressed it during practice. I thought Sertan had one. I could be wrong. He may have. I thought he had one. I mean, still way too many. But I mean, I think. Yeah, we, but we again, lead, the lead, aggressive lead penalties the and penalty yards. Yeah, is an issue. Well, I mean, when, but, when you play good teams, that's going to bite you. Yeah. When you play good teams, that's going to bite you. So I, I think that's obviously a concern. I'm curious to see how we improve in that. Just not sure what that's all about, though. I mean, we, you know it's not coaching. You know it's, it's not a discipline thing. Maybe it is just youth. Maybe it is just, you know what, well, tough. Well, I mean, some of the most penalized offensive lineman is uh, – Most seven, experienced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he, he's committing right. this uh, lack of focus, as right. Saban likes to call it. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, have we seen that many penalties? 
penalties by DJ Dale or, or not really, or mm-hmm. you know, not really. So I, I just think it's maybe out of frustration. Yeah, a lot of times. But but I think it, I think we had a better game. Yeah, we did have a better game. We we did, especially from a DB's perspective. So um, it's going to be important as we go on into the next game. Let's take a quick break. And then we'll come back and talk about um, the big bad LSU when they come rolling into Tuscaloosa. The Tigers. So uh, we'll take a short break on behalf of Bob English and State Farm. We'll be right be right back, Tide fans, with Tide Talk. In life, some things just go together, like a burger and fries, and home and auto insurance from State Farm. So make it a combo. Combining your home and auto insurance could save you time and money. And who doesn't like that? Just call me, Bob English, or any of my experienced hometown team and find out how you could start saving today. It's just another way. All right, welcome back, Tide fans. Back. Back. All right, guys. It's, the, it's you know, setting up as the game of the century number three. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and just say I'm not sold on that. As far as what? Gave them a century? As far as <laughs> LSU being as good as they're made out to be. Now, I'm not saying that, that we're as good as we have been in the past. I still think we're the best football team in the country right now. There's some debate, Ohio State, et cetera. But I, I, and I also have not bought into the Joe Burrow Kool-Aid. I watched him play against Auburn. Granted, I know there's, you know, it's wet and that sort of thing, and that affects – that affects the game. I, very similar to what we do. Short passes, get it to guys that make plays. And um, I, I didn't see him throw the ball down the field, but maybe one time. So, you know, is he a good quarterback? Yes, he's progressed from last year, without a doubt. He, he's very accurate. He is able to extend plays with his feet. But is he the best quarterback in the conference even? I don't think so. No. Do we really want him to get started on that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree, and I, I, I completely agree. I don't think this is anything like 2011. Uh, I think both of those teams were much better than what these two teams are going to be playing in two weeks. Um, I don't think Burroughs is all that. I know he's got an incredible completion uh, uh, rating right now of, what, 79%, which is unheard of. It's a lot of thinking dunks, but still connections, and they throw deep. Uh, when need be. I'm sorry, I just I look at the opponents. It's not all that. I give you credit for your completion uh, ratio, but I'm just not. Now, you come into T-Town and you beat us and you put on a show? Yes. Well, then you've won my I, I agree. So, I'm just not believing it just yet. And if that were the case, then we wouldn't be a nine and a half point favorite. I, I, and I, real quick, Jimmy, and I'll let you talk. I, we've seen that Texas isn't the football team that everybody says they are. So, to me, their best game to date was this past weekend. They beat Auburn. Auburn's got a good defense, but Auburn struggles offensively. And they beat them 23-20 and probably was could have gotten beat. Yeah. Um, so, I agree. If he comes into Tuscaloosa at our place – he has complete 79% of his passes and beats us. I'll change. I'll, I'll, be, I'll say it on the show that he right. is better than what I So I look at this game, if we want to compare it to 2011, I think these two offenses are probably as good as the two defenses were in 2011. And the, good. And the that's good. defenses are probably like the offenses were in 2011. That's, so it's that's almost like a, a flip-flop. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm definitely excited about it. But, yeah, I'm not buying into the Kool-Aid with Joe Burrow either. But look, guys, I mean, they are drastically improved on offense versus what we've seen in the last six or eight years for that. Well, matter. even Gary Danielson said the other day, he said, let's be honest, this is probably LSU's best offense ever. Yeah, ever. So I'll, I'll give you credit there. But I'm still not there. Now, maybe it's, you know, I remember watching Andrew Luck when he was uh, his junior year at Stanford. Stanford. And, and I heard all the. Hype, and I finally watched him, and he went down the field and scored. And I said, "But well, that was unimpressive." And then I started thinking, "I said, wait a minute, he didn't make a mistake. He made every completion. He just did everything he was supposed to do." So maybe Burroughs is that. I don't see it right now, but 
again, if he comes in, he does it. You got it, bro. You are that good. Mm -hmm. I just don't think so right now. I don't think they've faced a defense. Not that we've got a great defense. Right. But I think if they played in the, Auburn had a decent up front, really good, but their secondary has always been suspect. Yeah. And I thought they played him really well. Mm -hmm. And like you said, only one deep ball. So we'll Yeah, I, I um I don't know that they have played in, in an environment that they're gonna play in next on, Saturday. On the road. On the road. Right. You know, hundred and two, hundred and three thousand probably. And I don't know that they've played a defense. I, I agree. Not that our defense has been what we've seen from us in the past, but way better. I just don't know that they've done well, that. And and let me let me throw my curveball to that. When somebody's matching them score for score, they've beat teams and they're putting up points. And who have, who's matched them score for score except for this past weekend, which was Auburn, and Auburn struggled to do that. Right. They haven't met. So it's different when you're – it's 35 to nothing and you're out there throwing those passes. There, there's, there's no pressure. When it's – when you're down 7 to nothing, maybe 10 to nothing, when it's 7 to 7, that pass now becomes a little bit harder. And here's where I, I kind of got beat up on my Facebook post today, and that's right. Maurice Food on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> feel free to send me a request. <laughs> I'll review you, and we'll see. Uh, but, no, what I said was uh, the fact that they couldn't put Auburn away. And it's no disrespect to Auburn because I thought their defense was solid. Yeah, very. But their, Auburn's offense is struggling bad. Yeah. And the fact that LSU couldn't pull away and had that huge separation getting up by 20, 28, it didn't happen. I was sitting there waiting in the second half, and Auburn just kept playing. They're, you know, so the fact that LSU couldn't do that, I'm like, hmm. Yeah, at one point, Auburn, I watched the game. At one point, Auburn had four straight three and outs, if I'm not mistaken. I know it was three for sure, and I thought it was the next it was. position. Four straight three and outs. And against a team like LSU in a, in a nine versus two matchup, you can't do that and, right. and have success. And, you know, we're going to struggle if we do that. If we come in, you know, Next Saturday night, not this coming, but in a couple of weeks, if we come in and do that, we're going to struggle. I mean, you know, but I just don't see that happening. Well, I'm going to be curious. We've been saying it all year, you know, how, you know, kind of we haven't used the whole playbook on offense, I think, or on defense. And maybe part of that is because of the youth. But, again, are they freshmen still or not? So I'm going to be interested to see, you know, from a scheme standpoint, because I've read some stuff where Auburn was playing more of kind of almost like a prevent everything up front. Rush so, three. So they couldn't. They did that they, a lot. You know, they, so they didn't, they weren't giving up that long pass. Or, you know, so is Saban going to kind of take something from that? Or is he going to be, go for broke, bring a lot of pressure, bring all these blitzes, leave our guys out on islands? You know, so I'm going to be interested to see how, what kind of game plan and, and scheme our, our man. Well, you can bet with. that they've already started breaking it down. And I believe that our DBs are really, really good. I believe that we, that he's going to have to be really, really good. What have we said for all these years, what it takes to beat Alabama, and that's superb quarterback play. But and usually those are running – those are quarterbacks that, that can run. run. So yeah, that's right. So, I don't, you know, although Burroughs ran for a few the other day, he's not exactly Johnny Manziel. That's right. I, I agree with that. But superb quarterback play is, sure. is you know, he's going to have to throw those passes into man coverage when, we, when there's guys hanging all over him because we, we've been able to, to do that. Well, he's going to have to play a perfect game. But even then, we've already talked about it, our, our offense is pretty good too. So, That's so, what I mean. As I mean, far as to, to Sean's So point. even on a perfect day, we perfect. can still beat them. Yeah, man. I would be surprised if we can't match them score for score all game long. I mean, I know that they'll try to do their best to take away the slant, but there's so many other things that we can do within this offense. So. Jimmy, does Tua play? Does he start? N let me rephrase. Not does he play, does he start? Yes. Maurice? I think I got a friend request. Uh, yes, he plays. Uh, you and I were talking. We've had ankle injuries. He was walking to the locker room, and if anybody's had a high ankle sprain, it hurts. Yeah. So the fact that he's able to do that lets me know that the recovery wasn't going to be that long and he's just got to take
text alert that uh, he'll be practicing on, on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely thinking that he is going, I think he's going to start. But let me just make this known. I'm okay if Mac Jones starts. I, I, I think Listen, there's no doubt that two is a better quarterback, a little more experienced, a little more polished with respect to – but I'm telling you, Mac Jones is capable enough with what we have on offense to, to play at home against LSU and win. But I do believe Mac two, Jones will play. two will start. It'll be in the fourth quarter. Ooh. <laughs> Good one. That's right. We open as a nine-and-a-half point favorite. I know that will change, you know, as the weeks go. I know that will change. I'm saying it's going to end up around six, six and a half, somewhere that, uh, in there. It still tells me that, that Vegas knows more about it than we do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's going to be a fun one to watch. There's no doubt about it. It's the game that we've been talking about for a while now. It's, it's going to be our biggest test, you know, to this point. I think it's going to be LSU's biggest test to this point, obviously. So be fun to watch, guys. We'll be, I'm sure we'll be texting and talking during the game. So. Um, Tide fans, we will be right back here next week. Now, we will be on, having a bye week. We will come back and talk more about the LSU game. We'll give you more updates on what we know with respect to Tua and some things leading up to that game. So uh, join us again right here on Channel 7 and 207. And uh, hold your seats, Tide fans. We'll be back next week with Tide Talk. Bye, Bob. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide.